Many ion channels that exist inside our body, for example, sodium ion channels and potassium ion channels, actually respond to changes in the electric potential difference in the voltage difference between the two sides of the membrane. And these special types of ion channels are known as voltage-gated ion channels. Now, there are three main conformational states that voltage-gated ion channels can actually exist in. So we have the closed state, the open state, and the inactivated state. So let's begin by focusing on the closed state. And let's suppose our voltage-gated ion channel is a voltage-gated potassium ion channel. So let's suppose we have a membrane and let's suppose the resting membrane potential of this membrane is negative 60 millivolts. And what that means is if we compare the charge of the inside of the membrane to the outside, the inside will be negatively charged, the outside will be positively charged as shown in this diagram. And we know from physics, whenever we have a separation of charge, that creates this resting membrane potential that creates these electric field lines that will run from the positive end to the negative end. And these electric field lines will play an important role as we'll see in just a moment. So we have a high concentration of potassium on the inside and a low concentration of potassium on the outside. So let's focus on the structure of this voltage-gated ion channel. So this is basically the same sort of structure that we spoke about previously. So we have the purple region, the purple domain, which basically consists of the region that actually contains that inner cavity and the selectivity filter that allows those ions to actually pass across the membrane. Now we also have these other domains shown in purple in uh, light purple and these other domains are known as paddles and these paddles have a positive charge now whenever we place positive charges inside a, an electric field those positive charges will either move along the electric field from the positive to the negative side or they will orient themselves along that electric field and that depends on whether or not they're actually fixed in space so in this particular case, we have these fixed uh, we have these fixed paddles, and these fixed paddles have a positive charge. So if we have the positive charge, that positive charge will try to get as close to the negative charge as positive as as possible. And so the orientation of these paddles will be as shown in this diagram. So essentially they will orient themselves downward. And when they orient themselves downward, what that means is it will basically restrict the size of that opening of the pore on this side of the membrane. In fact, because of the downward orientation of the paddle, that pore will be completely sealed and these ions will not be able to pass across that membrane. So when the membrane is at its resting potential, the paddle domain lies in its downward position as shown in this diagram. In this position, the paddle constricts the width of that base opening of that pore, which blocks any ion from actually passing through that selectivity felt, a filter found inside that purple region. Now what happens if we change the potential, the resting membrane potential of that particular cell membrane? So let's suppose we undergo some process that changes the voltage difference. For instance, we undergo the process of depolarization. So depolarization simply means we change the polarity of that membrane. And so instead of having negative charges here and positive charges here, we're going to have positive charges here and negative charges here. And so for instance, we're going to go from negative 60 millivolts to positive 20 millivolts. So this is what happens when we undergo the process of depolarization. Now, when we change the polarity, we also change the direction of the electric field lines. Now, instead of running this way, they run this way. And what that means is that will also change the conformational orientation of the panels because they have a positive charge. And so instead of being oriented in this downward direction, they're going to essentially switch upward. And as they move upward, what that does is it no longer constricts that opening of that pore 
found on the base of this purple section. So that purple region can actually, can actually open up. And what that means is now we have a hole large enough that can actually allow the movement of these ions spontaneously from the high electrochemical potential <coughs> to the low electrochemical potential. So we see, so what happens if there is a change in the membrane potential such as during depolarization? Well, the change in polarity of the two sides of the membrane will cause these voltage sensitive paddle domains actually to orient themselves upward along this new electric field that now points this way. And the upward movement of the paddles actually causes the opening. So the widening of that opening of that pore inside this section of the purple channel. And so this now allows the spontaneous flow of these potassium ions. And the same exact thing is true for the sodium voltage gated channel. It allows the movement of these ions through that pore and through that selectivity filter found inside that inner cavity. So this is basically the closed state and this is what we call the open state. Now, immediately after opening, we actually have a process known as inactivation take place. And to explain the process of inactivation, we basically came up with a model known as the bowl and chain model. So essentially, what we also see here is this domain that is like a sphere. So we have this uh, sequence of amino acids that creates this globular spherical structure we call that ball. And the ball is basically attached to the chain. And so this chain is actually a sequence of amino acids that create this long polypeptide chain. And so it is attached to this section of the protein. Now, the thing about this chain or the thing about this ball is it also has a positive charge. And because it has a positive charge, as soon as this orients upward, what happens is will, this ball will essentially move into that pore. And as soon as it moves into that pore, it blocks off these ions from actually moving in that direction. So we see milliseconds after opening, this actually is inactivated as a result of the presence of this ball and chain structure. Now again, why does this want to move into this region? Well, because all these molecules rush into this channel and because they rush in, that also basically uh, causes the movement of this ball into that chain. But the problem is, uh, into that pore, but the problem is that ball cannot, cannot actually fit into that cavity. And so it ends up blocking that pore. And so now, as soon as it's inactivated, even though this entire section is actually still open, it is blocked because this pore, uh, because this ball actually blocks that pore and these ions cannot move through that particular uh, channel. And so we see that we have this closed state in which the opening is actually constricted and closed as a result of the orientation of these panels. In this particular case, what we have is the opening of this pore and this ball hasn't had the time to actually go into that pore. And so in this short interval of time, these ions can actually move through that channel. But eventually what happens, and it happens actually pretty quickly, this ball moves into that open pore and that occludes, that blocks that pore. And so these ions cannot actually move through that channel. So the channel is only open for a very short period of time. And according to this ball and chain model, we have a positively charged ball domain held by a polypeptide chain that moves back and forth within that aqueous environment. So essentially moves back and forth within that aqueous environment. And as soon as we have the opening, so milliseconds after opening, as a result of that influx of many of these ions that causes the movement of this particular positively charged ball into that pore. And as soon as it blocks off that pore, it prevents any further movement of these ions. And so we see that these voltage gated ion channels are only open for a very short period of time. But when they are open, because they're so effective and efficient, they allow the movement of these ions across that membrane. So we have the closed state, we have the open state, and we have the inactivated state. 
and it basically moves back and forth between these states and that regulates the movement of these ions across that cell membrane. So this is the same, it's, it's not only true for these voltage gated potassium ion channels, but it's also true for all other types of voltage gated ion channels that exist inside our body.